Hi guys, GoodGolf here with a brand new video on mirror networking. Or is it? Well, actually it's time to make the transition to fish networking, so I decided to redo the first video in the series and build the scene using fish networking instead of mirror. So first things first, grab the free version of fish networking from the asset store. If you are as enthusiastic about fish networking as I am, then you should consider going for the pro version by sponsoring the author on Patreon. But that's for you to decide. I loaded the Lodenfell asset into the project and opened one of their example scenes. As you will see, the switch from Miro to fish networking is not super difficult, however, there will be some changes needed. By the way, I do recommend watching the tutorial videos first and subscribing to the fish networking Discord server. Ok, back to the project. These are the steps you need to take to make this work. Drag and drop the network manager prefab into the scene. Create a cylinder for the spawning position and remove its collider. Duplicate and rename them both. Add these spawner positions to the player spawner script. This is the first difference between mirror and fish networking. You just add transforms to the player spawner script instead of attaching a script to each spawner object. The fact that the player spawner script is a separate script, instead of it being embedded in other code, is a good example of how fish networking improves on mirror. It's easier this way to create your own spawning logic. Now it's time to add the Invector Free third person controller to the scene. Disable the input script and add the following scripts Network Object, Network Transform, and Network Animator. The animator automatically picks up the right animator component for this person controller. Then turn this object into a prefab and delete it from the scene. Add the prefab to the player spawner's player prefab property. Add the modified player script from our first video in the series to the prefab and link the Invector Camera prefab to its camera prefab property. At this stage I thought it was ready for the demo, but I forgot to add the scene to the project build settings before running the build. So let's do that now and build and run. As you can see it works as intended, with the executable running as client off the screen and the one in Unity running as the server and the client. Let's take a quick peek at the code, which I published on GitHub. First of all, a small change in the code is needed because we disabled the input script on the prefab, 
so there's no need to disable it again in the awake function. Next, we use a different event to kick off the code for the locally owned player. This is clearly described in the fish networking documentation. Use onStartClient in combination with the isOwner check. The code is similar to Mirror with one major exception. The Invector free code does not play nicely with the timing of this event. So instead of enabling the input in this event, we'll need to do it slightly after this event is done. So I use the invoke call to enable the input after half a second. If we look at the enable input code, we need to do a few initializations ourselves, since the Invector's third person input's start method isn't called when you enable the component again. So we'll need to do that ourselves. Having completed this exercise, it's clear that the translation to fish networking so far isn't a big problem. As I mentioned in part 10, one of the reasons to switch is performance. There are other reasons too, for example, the built-in support for authoritative movement. There are other new features, but also features which are improved when compared to Mirror. We'll probably take a look at a few of those further down the series. Thanks for watching and I will be off researching the next video.